Now, it's believed that Europe and the polar regions were the areas hardest hit by severe temperature changes caused by climate change just last year. Well, according to new analysis, Europe experienced its warmest summer on record, while some parts of Greenland were up eight degrees warmer than average in September. Overall, 2022 was the fifth warmest year on record, which means the last eight years in a row are each the warmest yet measured. Our environment correspondent Matt McGrath joins us now from Cardiff. Matt, just tell us more about these figures and what they, what they tell us. Well, we've seen a number of countries reporting in the last few months that they're having extremely warm temperatures, and this data confirms a lot of that. We've seen the UK, France, and other countries in Western Europe particularly reporting that they had broken records for the warmest year, and that's connected to this very hot summer, very long, prolonged heat waves that were experienced as well. Now, I think Europe is a, in an interesting place. It's a very large land mass, and because it's a land mass, it soaks up more heat than perhaps the oceans around it. It's also close to the Arctic region, and the Arctic has been experiencing record warming as well. Parts of Siberia were three degrees Celsius warmer than average last year as well. That heat doesn't just stay in the Arctic, it drifts down to Europe too, and that's led to this record summer in Europe. So not just Europe though, other parts of the world experiencing very hot temperatures, but overall the world had some cooler parts as well, and overall it's the fifth warmest year according to these figures from Copernicus issued today. And what are we seeing in other regions across Asia, across Africa, for example? We're seeing a very interesting mix of extreme heat and extreme events as well. So we saw extreme heat in Pakistan earlier in the year, and that was followed later in the summer by massive floods that have you know, debilitated millions and millions of people. And scientists say that there is a connection between this warming and the flood experience that they've had there. So different parts of the world have had different experiences. The polar regions, as I said, Antarctica and the, uh, and the Arctic have both warmed extremely at extreme high levels. We saw Vostok in Antarctica recording its warmest temperature ever, warmest temperature in 65 years. As we said, Siberia was very warm, Greenland eight degrees above the average as well. So we're seeing this uh, effect in so many different parts of the world in different ways. Some parts cool, some parts cooling, and the overall effect, the Earth being the fifth warmest year on record. But we get more data later this week and that position might actually change. Uh, is the knock-on effect or the expectation, uh, expectation from this, having looked at the last eight years, that this coming year will repeat that and be more extreme or is it difficult to tell? Well, there's a number of factors here that all point in a negative direction, if you like. The first is that we, this year, 2022, that's just gone, was a, a La Nina year. And that, uh, it's the third La Nina year in a row. And that natural weather phenomenon tends to act as a bit of a break on heating. And we don't know how much this year will be affected by a La Nina as well. If that doesn't affect it so much, then we could have a warmer year. But we're also, as you say, it's the eighth year in a row in which temperatures have been one degree or more above the pre-industrial. Scientists are worried about that because the Paris Agreement means that temperatures should stay under 1.5 degrees this century and yet here we are eight years in a row possibly nine next year in which it'll go above one degree and that will concern scientists and politicians about the future direction of this warming and uh, is, is there any part of the globe which has, has been more stable there have been some parts of the globe that have been stable. It's not been as warm in Australia. It's not been as warm in other parts as well, partly because perhaps of the influence of La Nina. As I said, it brings different temperatures to different areas and brings a little bit of cooling to the situation as well. But we've seen in some parts of the United States as well, in, in, uh, because we've had extreme cold in some parts of Canada and, and the United States, as well as these extremely hot regions. But it's, it's what the scientists will focus on, I think, are these, the polar regions, which should be cooler, being extremely hot, and Europe. Where, this, where there's a huge population of people living in you know, relatively well-off <coughs> conditions compared to the rest of the world, experiencing quite a degree of heating and likely to continue. Matt McGrath, thanks very much.